And our first guest in studio with me is Mr. Matthew Schistler. He's the CEO of Cord Blood America Incorporated, stock symbol CBAI. Uh, Happy New Year, Matt. Don, to you as well. Now, Matt, of course, Cord Blood America is in the business of collecting and, and storing umbilical cord blood and, and stem cells for, for possible fu future use. Can you give us a general overview of the company, please? Yeah, well, Cord Blood America, we were founded to privately bank umbilical cord blood stem cells. And what that essentially means is that parents pay us to store the stem cells of their child that's being born. I'm um, down in the, uh, in the umbilical cord. When a child is born, there's a perfectly matched set of stem cells um, to that child that can be used uh, in the future to battle diseases such as cancer and leukemia. And so parents are choosing to save that source of stem cells at the time of birth, give it to us, we cryogenically freeze it, and then if they ever happen to need it in the future, they have that resource for their child. You know, it's interesting because we've been watching your company now for, I guess, about four or five years, right. and we've seen, I think, a dramatic shift in public attitude and perception surrounding the subject of stem cells. Wouldn't you agree? I do. I do. And, and I think I said this to you four or five years ago. You asked, you know, Matt, what's it going to take for the public to start grasping this? And I said, Don, it's going to take more diseases and more news about the commercialization of use of stem cell therapies as a curative effect. Uh, for diseases and what we've seen in the last four or five years is children being cured of things such as childhood leukemia, mm -hmm. um, working on muscular dystrophy and different types of diseases that are being used in stem cell therapies and because of that it's the it's the cause if you will that has brought the education It's not the education bringing people to the cause and, and I, we predicted that a few years ago. Well, Matt I don't want to put you on the spot because uh, I know you're not a scientist or a researcher but can you give us uh, maybe a little bit about the science of stem cells and how they are used? Yeah I, I know enough to help educate the, the, the general population. <laughs> stem cells are essentially Don cells that have no identity and these cells can theoretically be used by scientists and manipulated into any form of cell within the, in the human body so you may ask, well, what are, have stem cells been used to do? And, 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 and traditionally, Don, for the last 35 years or so, they've been used to repopulate one's immune system. And, and the reason why you would repopulate one's immune system is if a cancer or leukemia patient would undergo radiation or chemotherapy, those treatments kill the cancer cells, but absolutely destroys the immune system. And so the body becomes weak, it can't fight off disease, and it can't remain strong enough to continue those treatments to, to kill the cancer cells. Well, using stem cells, um, keeps the immune system strong, keeps the body fairly healthy, if you will, and, and they, they can go through these treatments to fight off these diseases. Well, in the last 10 years or so, a shift has been made more and more from bone marrow stem cells because it's costly, painful, and, and less effective to umbilical cord blood stem cells, which are pure, and frankly, if you save them at the time of birth, it's a perfect match for the child. Wow, that's interesting. Again, the company is Cord Blood America, CBAI. And again, our toll free number for free information in the mail is 888 259 4449. Now, Matt, you, you mentioned uh, conditions like leukemia. And I remember reading uh, in the news, maybe like about a month or so ago, that uh, doctors were able actually to create a new larynx for a young girl uh, from stem cells. I mean, that's, that's fascinating progress. Yeah, to go back to the science, Don, just a little bit, there's two forms of stem cells. There's what's called hematopoietic, which repopulates the immune system. And we were actually the first company to have stored a stem cell source from the umbilical cord that actually cured a child, a girl of childhood leukemia. Really this was written great. up in January of 2007 um, by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, what you're talking about, regrowing the larynx, is the other form of stem cells, which is regenerative. It means it regenerates tissue. In, in very simple terms, if you took a stem cell and combined it with a, um, a larynx cell, if you will, a tissue cell, the stem cell starts taking the form of that cell wow. and starts regenerating. So they've been able to do that with the larynx, heart tissue, muscle tissue, bone, skin, tendon. I mean, those are all the regenerative applications that are currently uh, in clinical trials right now. Now, the last time you and I spoke, uh, we talked about you were going to initiate, the company, I should say, initiate an education campaign to acquaint more people with the concept of cord blood storage. Uh, can you tell us about that again? Yeah, actually, we, um, we just launched it. Um, it's, it's, we, it what I said in, in the press release is that it's time to start the conversation. The fact is that with education, we believe more and more people will get behind the causes of stem cell therapies. Um, and the way we've approached starting the conversation is through the use of social media um, and you know net media networking on, on the internet mm -hmm. and it allows more and more people to ask questions to the company about stem cells how and how it directly impacts their families I mean if you read most stem cell press releases they're so scientific no one can really you know interpret what, the, what does that mean to them exactly. and we want to be the company that says this is what this means to you or potentially means to you
Well, you know, when my wife Tracy gave birth to our daughter, uh, you know, a couple weeks short of eight years ago, uh, this subject was never brought up to us. Uh, we knew nothing about it. I hadn't met you yet. That's right. And so the, the, uh, the umbilical cord blood was simply thrown away, unfortunately. Uh, so this, I find it fascinating you're using social media, because I mean, here we are in the 21st century, and it's a whole new way of, of getting this message out to the public. Well, we've gone through the traditional methods, using the, the doctor's offices, and you can put your information in there, but let's be honest, it's not the doctor's job to sell families on whether or not they want to store stem cells. We also are the only company that has direct relationships with insurance partners. And insurance puts the information in their in, in their programs when a, when a family becomes pregnant, but that's still the family still has to seek that information and read it and so forth. However, we've come to find there's a lot of people that have an interest in a topic, and you can use social social media to disseminate the information very very quickly and also allow a, more of a conversation. It's not a press release or a brochure or you know a static website that says this is it. It is what does this mean to me? Core Blood America, can you help? Answer yes, and we believe through that education program we'll attract more and more clients to Cord Blood America. That's exciting. Uh, a very exciting conversation here. Cord Blood America, CBAI is the stock symbol. For more information, please call us toll free triple eight two five nine forty four forty nine. Now, if I remember this correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're the fourth largest company uh, in your industry right now. You've had a, a growth period by both organic and acquisition modes. Uh, what can we expect in 2009? Yeah, and we're fourth largest in the United States, just to clarify. There's about 150 of us around the world, and we're probably in the top 20 in, around the world. Okay. I wouldn't know, but um, the, uh, for 2009, you're going to see a lot of what 2008 looked like. You know, Don, we, we've been on for, for four or five years now. You've seen us grow, but yes. we had to take on a lot of debt to get there. And so okay. we used that debt to make the acquisitions to grow organically. And we've been churning through that debt. We churned through it in 2008. In 2009, we believe the curve is going to start going up as we churn through more and more debt. We're going to look at more strategic organic growth. So I would say maybe we add another insurance partner or two in 2009. Mm -hmm. I would look for that. The other thing I'd look for is more creative acquisitions. We were kind of... We, we hadn't made an acquisition since summer of 2007. We wanted to get those debts paid down, but we think we're at a point now where there's some more creative acquisitions around, the, you know, not only domestically, but around the world for us. And, and last but not least, we're going to take a look at diversifying our stem cell base. Umbilical cord blood stem cells are great in the hematopoietic sense, but there's more therapies that have more commercialization power using regenerative type stem cells, and we're going to look at potentially storing different types of stem cells that can not only help in the battles of cancer and leukemia, but regenerative properties as well, like wound care, skin, hair, teeth, bone, and right on down the list. So we're, we're looking to diversify our stem cell base. You know, uh, depending when you're watching this program, we're about a week or so away from the Obama administration taking over here in the United States, and they've gone on record as being in favor of stem cell research. Uh, how does that affect your industry and your business? Well, it's interesting. The, the current administration is not against stem cell research. What they're against is the government funding stem right. cell research. And the biggest bank in the country, as we all know, because of the debts we've racked up, is the federal government. And what the Obama administration has said is, we're in favor of stem cell research, so we look to, we seek to see whether or not the federal government will fund further stem cell research. Now, the fact that remains, Don, is that there's, they're looking at funding embryonic as well as adult stem That's cell right. research. How does that affect us? Well, the faster we can get therapies to market, the more people say, hey, that problem affects our family. Imagine if something that like juvenile diabetes can be cured using stem cells, and that's 10% of the population. Mm -hmm. That's going to wake up a lot more families to say, we better store these just in case our child inherits the disease from us. And that's how we think it's, it's going to be affected. Now, again, I know you touched on this very lightly, but you, you mentioned embryonic stem cells again, and uh, I think it's very important in, in the second half of this interview to, again, clarify the distinction bef between what you do and the controversial embryonic stem cells. Yeah, there's, there's two forms. There's embryonic, and then there's adult. Embryonic or con in the controversial stem cells that scientists use to manipulate, create cures. Adult stem cells come from a few sources, and we're in the business of storing adult stem cells. Okay. Once again, Cord Blood America, CBAI is their stock symbol. Triple eight two five nine forty four forty nine is our toll free number. Why is this a good time right now, Matt, for folks to take a cl close look at Cord Blood? Well, I think because you know, from an outsider's perspective, if you take a look at the administration and they've come out and said that they're going to focus on stem cell research, I think it's a good time to look at our company. Secondly, I think you're starting to see more and more, more and more therapies getting through trials, and it's going to be just a year or two away from seeing a couple more things commercialized, which will be a great time for Cord Blood America. And last but not least, you're coming, if you look at Cord Blood America as a stock, you're coming in at a time where we've been paying down a lot of debt, and so the, 
the asset value of the company and the market cap of the company are so skewed that it, if, if you, to do some technical analysis, you know, we have close to 20,000 customers and if, if we've seen companies sell for as much as $2,300 a sample. Mm -hmm. Even if you said our asset value was $1,000 a sample, you know, you're looking at a $20 million valuation, wow. which is 20 times our current valuation. So that's the difference. Well, Matt, we're reinitiating coverage of the company. We'll be watching you very closely through the first quarter of this year. Uh, hope to have you on some more updates as things go along. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. Thanks, Don.